Today we're going to be talking about the luminance range mask in Lightroom. The first shot here is the original raw file, unedited and uncropped at all. This second version is after I've cropped it and added a couple of quick adjustments to the lighting and contrast of the overall scene. And then this final version is after we've added the luminance range mask and adjusted the lighting of the sky itself. So the first thing I notice in this picture is that there's kind of a lot of dead space at the top of the image. So the first thing I like to do sometimes is just think if this image could be cropped in a slightly better way. In this case, I think a 16 by nine crop would be very nice, uh, make it a little bit wider and a little bit more narrow. Just cutting off the tops and making you focus a little bit more on the center of the image. Now I'll cut to the edited version of this photo before I've added any of the luminance range mask to it. I just want to show you a little bit of what I do with the adjustment sliders, the tone curve, and just other sliders throughout the picture. One thing I'll make a note of here is the color grading tab. Uh, something I like to play with sometimes is the shadows and the highlights. In this case, the shadows of the image I thought could use a little bit of a bluish tone, kind of cool down the image. So you can see if I turn on and off the color grading tab here, you're going to see how it just adds that little bit of blue tone to the shadows. All right, so now we're gonna get into the important topic here, the luminance range mask. Short way to describe it is that you can select a certain area of the photo based on its exposure, whether it's very bright or very dark or somewhere in between. So one way we can select an area of exposure for this mask is just selecting the dropper tool and then just dragging a rectangle over the area that we want to mask. So because we want to mask the sky here, I'm going to draw a rectangle over the sky. Basically what it's telling Lightroom to do is look at this area of exposure. The sky is very bright, has a lot of highlights, a lot of whites in it. So it's telling Lightroom anything with this amount of exposure, this is what we want to mask and this is what we're going to want to play with in the edit. One thing I'll point out is that any of my masks right now I have set to this dark blue color. You can change this uh, mask color area to whatever color that you want based on the picture. Right now I just have it set to a dark blue so it really stands out against the sky. Now one thing you could see being an issue in this image is that the center where the fog is is also being masked. Basically because it has a similar exposure to the sky which we selected already. In this case I do not want that area of the fog to be masked and affected by what we're going to do to the edits here. So what we can do with one of Lightroom's new tools is within this mask we can have that luminance range and then we can click this subtract button and I'll select the brush and all we're going to do is basically brush out this area of the mask. Now this is very similar to what you could do in Lightroom before or things that you could do in Photoshop, but in one of Lightroom's recent updates, they've really streamlined this process and made it way easier to kind of create layers within Lightroom, kind of the way that you would with Photoshop as well. And another thing I'll point out real quick is that because we have the trees set to that cooler shade and the color grading and uh, the background's a little bit more blue, I want to pick a color for this mask that really stands out so that I make sure only the best areas are selected. In this case, having the mask as a dark blue is not very beneficial since it kind of blends in with the trees that are also blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the color of the mask and I'm going to move it over to something that stands out against the trees a little bit more. In this case, something a little bit more like a yellow or an orange, which is really going to contrast against that blue of the trees. So now I'm going to go back to my brushing tool. We're going to subtract from the mask. And you can see how those yellow areas of the fog um, really kind of stand out against the bluish areas of the trees. Really helps me show where I need to subtract this uh, area of the mask from with my brushing tool. And I'm just going to continue doing that. You can see how areas are being erased and how they're being removed from the mask. And you just want to be a little bit careful with this so that you're not going too far outside of the range that you want. Um, you can see that I have it feathered a pretty good bit too, just so that I'm not uh, getting any harsh outlines of what I'm erasing. And overall, I think that looks pretty good. So now we're going to unselect the show overlay box. So now that mask is looking pretty good, but the only issue I'm seeing is a bit of a weird fringing around the edges of the trees. It's basically just because our mask doesn't have the right settings applied to it for feathering and kind of smoothing out those edges. The best way to really affect this is to go back to the menu that I was talking about before and there's this slider for the luminance range itself. Now there's two parts to this slider that are really important. There's the hard outlined rectangle and basically that's telling you that 
whatever is with whatever area of the luminance is within this rectangle is what's being selected. So if I drag this lower end of the rectangle farther up to the right, it's basically telling Lightroom that I want less of the highlights selected for the mask. And so you can see it's gonna remove some of those highlights from the mask, which in this case is not what we want. And if I drag this area of the rectangle all the way to the left, it's gonna tell Lightroom basically that we want to include everything in the highlights as well as everything in the shadows. Um, and you can see that's gonna start bleeding into the trees, which is also not what we want. So what we wanna do is meet in the middle and find the best of both worlds. We wanna select the highlights, but we also want to kind of fade into the trees a tiny bit, just so that there's not any harsh fringes between the horizon of the trees and the skyline. So what I'm gonna do is actually just go back to using the dropper tool that we started with, select the sky again, so that we can at least have a good starting point. Then from here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to the edges of the trees, just so that I can really see what's happening on the edges of them. Then I'm gonna move around this second area of the mask, which is basically just feathering the edges of the mask. Basically telling Lightroom that we want to include darker areas of the image, but we want it to be a little bit smoother than what we were seeing before, and a little bit more faded in. So as I drag this area of the faded part of the mask farther into the shadows, you can see how it's starting to blend into the edges of the trees and create a smoother transition between the sky and the trees. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more to show you an example of if I move this faded area back up, it really creates a harsh fringe between the tree line and the sky. If I bring it back down, you're gonna really see that soft fade, which makes it look a lot more natural. All right, so now that we got this area of the sky selected in the mask, we're gonna start editing this area of the mask itself. So like I said, our major problem is that the sky and the trees are a little bit too far apart in exposure. It's really just too much contrast and you can't see the sky enough compared to the trees. So one thing we wanna start with is just drop the exposure of the sky overall. Before we get into shadows or highlights or anything like that, just drop the overall exposure to balance things out. A couple other things that we can play with are the color temperature of the sky and the tint between green and magenta. Now this can apply totally different to every kind of sky and sunset and sunrise that you're shooting. So I just suggest you play around with them and just see what fits the best mood of your scene. And then the next thing we can start doing is playing with the highlights and the whites. Now I usually like to bring the highlights down a lot in a scenario like this because it really helps balance out the sky with the foreground. But then to balance out bringing down the highlights, I like to bring the whites up a little bit. Helps add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of pop to that highlighted area of the sky. In this case, I don't think we really need to worry about the shadows or the blacks or anything like that. Sometimes what I do like to do is remove a little bit of the noise from the sky and maybe drop the clarity or the sharpness just to kind of smooth out the sky a little bit. This isn't necessary at all, but something I do sometimes. And then again, situationally, whether you wanna bring up the saturation of the sky, bring down the saturation of the sky, totally feel free to. And so that's basically it. Just wanted to give a quick lesson here. I hope you guys learned something. If you want more editing tutorials like this, please let me know in the comments. Please send me messages. Really, I read everything and I really appreciate all of your support. Uh, I'll leave it at that for now, just to keep it short, but have a great day and thank you for watching.